Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Welfare Clinic, uh, the show that you can call in and ask your question related to welfare. Ask uh, amra je subject niye kotha bolbo housing. Last program e amader onek viewer ra call kore chilen amader ke amra kubi dukhi to jaapna der kono shob call gul amra nite pai nai shob call gul ar uttor postnor uttor dite pai nai. Ei jonno aske अपना specifically housing ये शुद्ध discuss करा होगे आज के शुद्ध एक जन guest जाते आपना देर आरो बेशी बेशी करे हम लोग call गुला नीते पर या आपना देर post नोर उत्तर दीते परी ये जो ना आज के एक जन guest के नहीं आज चाहिए मैं आशा करिए आपना राशोबाई phone कर बन आपना देर post नोर रख बन जिन्हें आज के आमदर studio ते आसन हमार guest उन्हें किंतु � अपना हाउसिंग फील्ड कास करते सें कैंपेन करते सें जोनों गण के शहर जो शोजुगिता करते सें स्पेशली बांग्लादेशी कम्युनिटी के उन्हें शहर जो शोजुगिता करते सें उन्हें निजी एक जोन तार हमले से रेजिडेंट सो आज के शुद्ध हाउसिंग ये जेटा बोल से हाउसिंग ये डिस्कस कर बो हाउसिंग आमदर विशाल बो एक टा चेष्टा कर बोझे ये प्रोग्रामर माध्यम में आपने दर के जो तो टू इनफॉरमेशन शंभव दो आम रस ये तो चेष्टा कर चेष्टा कर बो जाते आप आम रस आशा करें जब आपने रा आप पोस्टनर उत्तर आपने रा किसी शायद जो पाबे न तो बा एडवाइस टा आपने दर जोनो हेल्पफुल हो बे ताहले आशन आमर गेस्ट के आमी इंट्रोड्यूस कर बट अपना अपना रा जुदी चांत आले अपना रा बांग्ला ते पोस्नो रखते पड़े ना मैं पोस्नो तो ओब्वियसली ट्रांसलेट कोरे दिवो बट अपना रा जुदी इंग्लिश है बोलते पड़े ताले डायरेक्टली शोरा शोरे अपना रा उन्हा शते कोता बोलते पड़े सो आमर गेस्ट होले ग्लिन रॉबिंस जेटा बोल से जोने एक बसोड � not as many as 30, I, I, I speak that much <laughs> So you understood. I understood, you understood. that. Well, no, it's well, over 20 years. Welcome to the show. Thank Thanks you for so coming on uh, today. Um, obviously, as, I, as you probably picked up a little bit mm. uh, from living in Tower Hamlets for many years, mm. um, as I said, the housing is one of the biggest issues mm. affecting many people right across, regardless of race, mm. religion, background, uh, families, young children are suffering, pe people's children's education is suffering, people's health is suffering as a result of it. And he has a huge interconnection with all the other welfare of in individuals' lives when it comes to housing. If you don't have a good home, mm. then it can have a detrimental damage mm. in the long term. Mm. Um, how do you think that we can overcome? It might be a huge question on your shoulder, but how do you think that we can overcome those kind of crises? Well, I mean, you're right. The, the the consequences <coughs> of the problem are complex, but I actually don't think it's that difficult a problem to solve if the political will was there. And first and foremost, it's a very simple thing. We need to build more genuinely affordable homes. In my opinion, that means council housing. And this is something that myself and others, including you, have campaigned for, for, as you say, we, we, decades. We always hear about uh, affordable. Mm. Now, really and truly, when we hear affordable from yep. whoever. Yep. Um, what exactly is affordable well, now? Yeah. You know, for, you know, if you earn forty thousand a year, can you buy a house or can you, you know, get live in a house that and pay your rent and all of those, especially with all the reduced uh, housing benefits mm. and reduced uh, allowances, uh, that which is already affecting people. Well, I think the answer to your question is certainly not in Tower Hamlet. It's not on £40,000. I don't think you could afford to buy or rent, uh, other than if you're one of the, I say fortunate, I don't think it should be about luck, but that if you are a council tenant, or even some housing association tenants, can afford to live in our borough, despite all of the wealth yes. that's surrounding us, on a moderate income, let's call it that. But increasingly, people, as you say, earning more than 40000 are finding it hard to live in our borough. But I, I think you're right to identify the problems with the definition of the term affordable, and it's almost ceased to mean anything, really. And we always prefix affordable with genuinely affordable, and what, what we mean by that is council housing. But what that really means is housing that is not for profit, because that's what makes council housing special. 
you know, private sector housing, if it's from a private landlord or you're buying, that's at the end of the day, someone's mm. making money out of that. Housing associations increasingly are making money out of the service they provide. Council housing is non-profit making. It's publicly owned. It's publicly financed. It's built with public money and public servants manage it. And that's why I think council housing is the key. Now, I'm not saying it's the only thing, <coughs> but it's the thing that has to return to the mainstream. Al although we're not here to attack um, mm. individual organizations, no. or, um, but sometimes we do come across people or people will call in to say that they have very bad experience either with their landlords, um, with some private landlords, not all of them, some of them, uh, even some of the housing association landlords. And people find it very extreme, mm. uh, extremely difficult, mm. you know, sometimes lack of uh, English language, uh, written or spoken, um, to challenge mm. uh, those conduct mm. and may not know necessarily the appropriate challenges that they should go through to seek that help? Mm. I mean, it's getting harder. Let's not, let's not pretend. But all tenants, all owner-occupiers to an extent, have rights. Now, knowing your rights is important. This is legal stuff and it changes all the time. Mm. But, you know, most people in this country, you know, it, we're not as bad as some other places. I've not long come back from America where tenants have far fewer rights than, than their equivalent over here. But I think this is the reason more immigrants come to... Well, I think uh, maybe that's part of it. I mean, actually, they're, in a sense, they're... Because this know, they're country be disappointed. always have been welcoming. Well, welcoming, and you, and you have a kind of safety net of, of rights and entitlements. And obviously, until fairly recently, anyway, we had a welfare state that was fairly comprehensive. Now, obviously, all of that is under threat. But nonetheless... You know, private sector tenants have certain rights against, for instance, unlawful eviction. Uh, council tenants and housing association tenants and private tenants have certain rights in terms of getting repairs done, for example. So knowing about those rights is important, and if we can help in the show to do that, that's a good service. And especially where you have single parents mm. or people with uh, disabilities or health problem. Right. Sometimes they may get for genuine reason mm. in rented years yeah. uh, might not be able to pay for a couple of months and stuff. And, but some landlord seems to be very uh, strict on that and, and they end up getting notice from the court or saying yeah. you haven't paid your rent, you have to evict you or is that taking legal proceeding? No, well, I think that's right. And obviously, for as long as there's so much money to be made out of housing as there is in, mm. in town, it's now, you will find that pattern, you know, because the landlord knows, whichever sector actually, that if he, she gets rid of a tenant, there's going to be another hundred tenants waiting to take that a flat. Mm. So that puts tenants in a very vulnerable position. But having said that, I think the advice always to give people is if you get into arrears, if you think you're struggling to pay the rent, you need to get advice early on. And I think that is still true in whichever sector you live in. Even pri most private landlords, in the end, don't really want to evict tenants because they would rather have tenants who are there and able to pay the rent because it's hassle for them to have to find new tenants. Mm. And it's a whole so, you know, I'm not saying that all landlords are going to be reasonable or sympathetic. Yeah, of course. But actually, if you are in trouble, Whatever the, whatever the situation, you, it's important to try and get as much advice and help as early as possible. And that's really important. I mean, I know I understand it. People will slightly bury their heads in the sand and, and hope the problem will go away. But actually, it, it, it's far better to go and talk to your landlord, whoever that landlord is. Now, obviously, mm. some landlords are ruthless, ruthless and will just, but in that circumstance, you know, again, you have to go back to your legal agreement with your landlord. You know, the tenancy is a contract. Everyone should have a, a, a written tenancy with their landlord again. So would you advise people that they shouldn't move into a property? Without with a written contract? No, they written, shouldn't. No, I mean, obviously there's all kinds of abuses going on at the moment. We've got people piled up in bedrooms. You know, we've got multiple occupation of spa living space that shouldn't be that shouldn't be happening uh, and, and because people are desperate they're prepared but to because because of the subletting mm, mm. Uh, issues a lo mm. lot of people obviously uh, cannot afford to take the full house no. uh, or the full flat mm. so they might be either sharing yeah. a room with somebody or in some rooms you go in and you may find 
three, four beds yeah. uh, in, in a room that they kind of three, four people room sharing. So obviously in that cir kind of circumstances, one might not have the necessary rights. No, well, you won't uh, have. I mean, you're not you're even a tenant about. under those circumstances. Legally, you're, you're called a licensee, for example. Uh, so your legal rights alter under those circumstances. But even then, I think it's important for people to understand you do still have some rights. So, for example, you cannot be unlawfully evicted. You can't be evicted for a threat of violence or intimidation. Ultimately, any landlord, whatever the circumstances, although the government this week have announced something that begins to question this in terms of the refugee crisis, but as it stands, any occupant of a house of any type under any circumstances has to, uh, the landlord or the owner has to go to court to get a lawful eviction order. You can't mm. bully or threaten or use violence to, to get people out. Um, so even under the worst kinds of circumstances, people do have legal rights and they need to find out what they are. But, you know, you're right, it's getting harder and harder and people will take desperate measures. And, you know, it, it, but that will make life difficult I, for you I, down I, the right I, road. I think, I think that, that's the concerns. But, mm. you know, we do, we do come across, and I'm sure in your uh, career in a, as a campaigner mm. and as a housing worker, mm. you have come, come, come across many times where people are being threatened mm. uh, either by landlords, private landlords, or even registered social landlord mm. in various ways. Mm. Sometimes you might not be a, a physical person standing no. outside your door. Sending the boys around. Yes, there, uh, saying you live or else. Mm. You know, it might be a written mm. uh, format. And sometimes the written can be more threatening yeah. than if you had somebody had in front of you is speaking to you. And some of the organization may just refuse to even talk to you face to face and they just have given you a letter, that's it, you d follow the instruction mm. or we will do whatever we need to do. And I think those kind of circumstances, people find it far more difficult. No, you're absolutely right and, and as a local councillor you would have had a, a, a sack full of letters of that kind from people in your ward and I've seen them as you say in work. I still want to emphasise the fact though that, you know, we don't want people to feel hopeless and and that there isn't anywhere that they can get help and assistance. There are places, it is getting harder and harder, but it's important that, that people f have some confidence to resist and to fight back, if I can put it in those terms. Um, because, you know, it is a, it's an unequal balance now, and, and all of the power, as you say, is in the hand of the landlord, really. But, you know, we have a history in this country and in other countries of tenants working together, campaigning together, fighting together for better conditions. And I think we need to start re-learning some of those habits. And I think there's signs of it beginning to happen. F from your experience, how many people actually read their tenancy agreement before oh, they move in? No, none, basically. I'm not even sure I did the last time I saw because one. Because, you know, you, you often get some, can you just sign there? Yeah, exactly. And you just put your signature, you yeah. get the keys, um, and you're moving in. Yeah. And then it's like, especially if you're moving into car-free developments yeah. or you know, um, you know, your electricity or gas being supplied by a particular yeah. Uh, yeah, provider yeah, yeah. that you might not want to go with, yeah. uh, or you haven't chosen that particular company to provide or mm. supply your uh, electricity or gas or mm. water even. Mm. Um, and I think we come across a lot of people that actually don't read no, their tenancy I'm agreement. Sure and I, I mean, think it's... Although this can be sometimes can be quite boring, yeah. reading a, a thick uh, booklet, but I think mm. it's quite essential. People actually understand what they're signing. And in this day and age, there's quite a lot of advice on the internet. Um, you know, I can't quote immediately a, a website, but I'm sure there are plenty out there that can give you some information at least. There's Shelter, the housing advocacy and campaigning yeah. organisation. There are places. There's a, 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 a ten Tenants Foundation or something it's called? Well, there's the TAM, it's Tenants Federation, yes, Federation which yeah. you know might be able to give some support and advice. Uh, it represents all tenants, whichever tenure in Tower Hamlets. So, yeah, there are places. Well, we're going to go for a quick uh, okay. break, Glenn. When we come back, we'll talk about the people waiting Mm. many years for a housing but not getting any offers and some of the other issues so thank you very much do stay with us uh, we'll be right back after this break <laughs> 